Well, thank you very much, and thank you, of course, for having me here again. And, uh, of course, I would like to, let's say, follow up on what the minister was just saying, and, uh, uh, let's say, a focus a bit on uh, the industrial perspective and the company perspective on uh, the real concrete opportunities that the energy transition in Greece has already created and the one that we see, are on, let's say, on the path of being developed. Let's say, being Thessaloniki, I've been looking a bit at, uh, let's say, the regional perspective as well. And uh, uh, what strikes me, if looking at our own investment plan, is how much, let's say, the energy transition has benefited the northern Greece in terms of attraction of big investment. Uh, in, the, in the last three years, in the midst of the whole energy crisis and all of the things which have been going on, a lot of investment are happening in northern Greece in terms of supporting the energy transition and getting out, of course, of the coal industry. And these investments have been, of course, in renewables, but also significantly in new gas fire generation, which is the most advanced technologies, the most advanced combined heat and power generation of the latest generation, which are being built or are just commissioned in Komotini, in Alexandropolis, in West Macedonia, new combined heat and power will be built to replace heat produced by coal. All these new investment in, let's say, what is today the cleaner of the fossil fuels also triggered infrastructure investments. So, let's say, in our overall uh, investment plan, uh, more than 600 million are being spent in this region uh, between pipeline and compressor stations. And pipelines uh, which have uh, also a short-term uh, benefit, not only supplying gas for uh, gas fire generation, replacing lignite, but also supplying distribution grid in area in the northern part of the country where it's still cold and where, uh, let's say, gas brings a cleaner way of, uh, let's say, warming the houses or supplying energy to the industries. So this has already, you know, significantly benefited in terms of potential, of, uh, let's say, opportunities, investment opportunities, new job opportunities, um, which are coming with uh, the energy transition. And the uh, opportunities uh, that the industry sometimes, uh, uh, let's say, uh, I was thinking about what the minister said about, let's say, financially viable investment. Of course, when you are uh, a company, this is your uh, absolute dogma. You don't want to invest money if you're not convinced that the investment is financially sustainable. And uh, let's say the big bet that all the players of the value chain uh, have been doing uh, in, a, uh, in an ecosystem way has been betting on infrastructures that can have a future and not only a transitional role. The new CCGTs that are built in this area are all of the latest generation and are all using turbines that can burn significant quantities of hydrogen uh, from 50% uh, in the Saloniki to even 75% if I remember well in the Averos in Alexandropolis. And all our new infrastructure are ready to transport hydrogen to these new power plants in the future and uh, connect with the regions. And again, the, role, the angle of uh, the coal regions, let's say in West Macedonia, we will have the first pilot project for Hellenic hydrogen to produce uh, hydrogen uh, dedicated, uh, with dedicated renewables that can be transported uh, to the new combined heat and power of the region, where again, a very significant blending will take place. So also, let's say on the molecular perspective, there is an ecosystem which is developing that uh, is not gonna work with hydrogen tomorrow, but uh, let's say the industries who have to take investment decision today are uh, making sure or, well, making the best that, uh, let's say, our ability to foresee the future give us to do whatever can be done to make sure that this asset serves today's needs, but also the needs of the long term in terms of, uh, let's say, uh, providing a cleaner energy for, uh, for the entire region. And let me add only one very brief consideration about the fact that, let's say, uh, when we can consider the cost of an energy system, and I been in the gas industry, unfortunately, many, many years, but uh, we very often forgot the cost and the value of flexibility. There is a hidden cost in the flexibility that until we have sufficient flexibility, we don't put a price to it. 
and uh, so far a lot of flexibility is provided by gas. Uh, every day we see a swing between gas and the wind that can be even 40, 50 percent of the daily demand. We have we weeks last, like the last one in which we had almost no wind and we had the 70 percent of the production coming from gas and even a bit of lignite. Uh, and maybe the day after we will have a lot of wind. Today we are not uh, suffering from the cost of this flexibility because the system is still capable of managing it. But of course, uh, with the increase of the swing, we will have uh, increasing needs of flexibility. And of course, there are batteries, of course, there are pump storages to come, but they will take years. And in the meanwhile, we will start to see emerging cost of flexibility that can be very, very big. So it, it's really important to understand that sometimes we don't see these costs because today they are part of the gas system. But uh, uh, if we need to increase this uh, flexibility uh, support, this will trigger costs that today we are not accounting for.